upcoming topic is Dovecot Pro 3.0, an introduction to the new Dovecot email platform, which is um, yeah the next evolution introducing a new architecture adapted to modern operational environments in order to maximize availability and, super important, lower the costs. Oh, availability, lower the cost, cool mm -hmm. stuff, man. Who is it? It's the product manager of Dovecot Open Exchange, Michael Sluzars. Put your hands together. Let's get him on stage. Good morning, Michael. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining this morning. Uh, welcome. My name is Michael Sluzars. Uh, I am the Dovecot Pro product manager, along with this guy. We will be presenting uh, what we've been working on the last two, three years to you here today, which is the next evolution of the Dovecot email platform. Um, Dovecot is a little bit of an esoteric, uh, email backends in general, a little bit of an esoteric topic. Uh, so I'm glad to see we have a fairly healthy crowd here. So be interested to know, show of hands, this is the audience participation part. How many people here either run Dovecot as part of their business or they run it themselves? Hopefully we have a, at least a decent number of hands. Good, good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think at the end of today's presentation, if you are a Dovecot Pro, uh, customer, or if you are a Dovecot or thinking about being a Dovecot Pro customer, you're going to be very excited. If you run Dovecot on your own personal server, this speech is kind of irrelevant for you. Uh, for everybody else, I think uh, you're going to uh, have uh, some eyes opened. Um, and quite honestly, uh, for risk purposes and cost purposes, if you don't use Dovecot Pro in the future to run a large scalable platform, doesn't really make a ton of sense. But that's my teaser. We'll get to uh, why I think that way. Um, first of all, let's work on some shared vocabulary. I guess we have some people here who are familiar with Dovecot Pro, but I want to, or Dovecot in general. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Dovecot is the most widely deployed email backend server in the world. Um, email backend servers, uh, the thing that nobody thinks about until they go down, right? Uh, I like to use the. Uh, uh, explain it with the mom test. Uh, my mom has no idea what I do or doesn't ask me questions about email or how it works or anything. But if, my, if her email goes down, I get a phone call of her, her asking me why the internet is broken. So, you know, one of the big features of, of any email back end is just to be the silent, uh, the, the, the silent partner in the background that enables kind of cool things, cool functions, you know, as hosters and uh, to build on top of email. Um, but we're that, uh, that, that style of the foundation that uh, enables those kind of experiences. Um, Dovecot has an open source core. The, the, the core of Dovecot is open source. But when we're talking about Dovecot Pro, we're talking about the commercial version of Dovecot. Um, that's uh, intended for scalable, uh, large scalable solutions at low cost and uh, easy administration. And I think another thing that's going to be important for today's presentation especially is the understanding that Dovecot Pro is not a single piece of software. It's really the whole platform um, around both the software and the ancillary parts of the software um, and the integration, uh, excuse me, the support, the SLAs. So it's the full platform, full package, rather than talking about an individual piece of software. So before we can get to the what of three, of what's in Dovecot Pro 3.0, I do think it's going to be uh, illustrative to uh, kind of walk through uh, a why. Why did we do this in the first place? And to do that, um, I think we're going to have to, you're going to have to have a slight history lesson on Dovecot uh, to understand where we are today and why, uh, why we're moving forward in this direction. Um, back in 2002, Timo Sarainen, um, identified a market uh, issue or identified a problem he had, which was he was trying to find an email server that was openly available that didn't suck. His words, not mine. Uh, so like any Finnish computer science type person does, apparently, they write open source software to solve the world's problems. Uh, and so Timo um, decided to create an email server that didn't suck. Um, open source from the beginning, 
Um, but Timo's particular, uh, particular issue that he was trying to solve was a, a single server, right? He was trying to just create a server for himself and his friends or people that he knew uh, to be able to, um, be able to run email. Um, luckily, Timo's a smart dude, um, and even when he was working on a single server, he was using design concepts that are very uh, broad, very uh, globally uh, useful. Uh, he com kind of comes from the unix -y sort of world. And so things like uh, scalability, security, modularity, extensibility, caching, you know, maybe not really necessary for a single server, um, but he was already thinking ahead and you know, adding these kind of functions or, or, or functionality to the core. Um, and really what that resulted in is a design, uh, this email design that was uh, flexible handling for a variety of mail usage patterns. Um, and it turns out that Timo uh, created something that people liked and people enjoyed. Um, and Dovecot started to gain traction in the market. Uh, and then that happened. People started using Dovecot for more than a single server. Um, started to get extended to larger installations. And once you start use, doing larger installations, uh, you have to start worrying about things like running multiple nodes, right? You're not running on a single server anymore. And then things like storage, shared storage. You have to, uh, running, uh, having all your data on a single computer doesn't become uh, an, uh, something that's, that's doable anymore. Uh, so it was around this time that he created uh, what's called the Dove, what I will call the Dovecot Director Architecture. This is we're talking mid 2000s here, uh, and this is sort of the beginnings of enabling Dovecot to be able to handle larger installations. Uh, and sure enough, did a good enough job that more people and larger installations uh, started adopting Dovecot as a as their email solution. Um, and so we reached a point where Timo finally couldn't scale himself anymore and decided to um, create a company around Dovecot itself and being able to support uh, commercial um, installations of Dovecot. Um, interesting point, well, I'll, I'll mention this point now. This is about 2010, 2011. This is really where Dovecot moved from being a community a community open source project to a commercial project. Maybe people that use Dovecut today didn't, don't really realize this kind of happened behind the scenes. But Dovecut has been a commercial product since 2011. Um, and then the open source version is only uh, what comes out of that commercial product at that point. Um, and so once we became a commercial, sure enough, larger installations. And once you get to larger installations, scale and backups and, and costs become even more of an issue. So object storage become, became one of the big features of Dovecot Pro when it uh, first became commercial. Uh, also increased importance of search. Uh, that's just in general in mail. Search becomes more important. So we have integrated search got built into Dovecot. Um, and luckily through all of this, even though it wasn't planned out, uh, Dovecot, because of that flexibility we talked about at the beginning with Timo, had the flexibility and the framework was there to be able to adapt to these kind of various features. And how do we know this? I mean, I can, you know, marketing fluff, but it's not marketing fluff. We know hundreds of millions of, of uh, hundreds of millions of customers or, or email accounts are run on Dovecot. Um, you know, stop by our, our OX booth. Uh, we have a beautiful slide. You, know, you can see the slide, a beautiful slide of all the logos the, uh, of commercial companies who use Dovecot. Not to mention, you know, people that are using um, uh, uh, Dovecot open source, for example. Um, but hopefully should become obvious through the, uh, th this brief history, there was no grand unified design from the beginning to be able to um, create a system that's scalable. This was additive. Luckily, the design allowed it, but it was an additive design. Um, and it was a design that was based in early 2000s technology. So while Dovecot, again, Dovecot continues to be good software, it is based on some technology that maybe is a little bit older. And now to the slide that I'm going to vote for the most obvious slide you're going to see in CloudFest this year. Guess what, people? <laughs> Cloud. 2000, or whatever this is, sorry, that's not behind me. Uh, 2000s is bare metal. 2020's cloud, right? You know, this is very obvious and all joking aside, though, maybe just five seconds of realization that, yeah, Dovecot was really designed for this bare metal world where sysops were um, bragging about, you know, back in the day, bragging about having seven year uptimes. And now we're in this cloud world where everything is dynamic and, and uh, ephemeral, and sysop, sysops and sysadmins get angry when, you know, uh, containers last for more than 24 hours. So these are very, very kind of different design worlds. Um, 
and related to this is the idea that Dovecot was really kind of designed more on this idea that servers were always available and always up. Um, the, 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 the design was sort of simple by necessity. We wanted to keep it simple. Um, all the Dovecot nodes were kind of independent of each other. And then we kind of added some glue after the fact to get things to work. Whereas today, especially with cloud platforms, orchestration, et cetera, um, a platform is something that's kind of a living, breathing thing. And we should take advantage and leverage that to be able to uh, uh, you know, allow Dovecot to, you know, these nodes to interact with each other to create a, a better platform. So I think that ends the why portion of my, uh, the discussion. Um, and so with this information, we have 20 years of experience uh, running Dovecot. Um, this all got folded up in the last two or three years. Um, team went to work, put their heads down and went to work. And today, we are here to introduce uh, Dovecot Pro 3.0, featuring the new Dovecot Palomar architecture. Um, this is a pro-exclusive architecture. It modernizes Dovecot Pro in so many words by making it more cloudy and embracing the more modern operational con uh, uh, concepts. Um, it allows uh, more stability, less downtime. It's intended to be more efficient in terms of using less resources. And then easier administration, as we'll talk about here in a, in a bit, by taking common administrative tasks and actually building them into the platform. Um, Dovecot Pro 3.0 doesn't run away from what we currently have, because what we have currently have, as I mentioned, is, is, is great software. Um, so we wanted to keep, we especially want to keep the core. We're not going to change the Dovecot core uh, concepts that we've had for 20 years, the scalability, security, those, those concepts. Um, Dovecot Pro, the highly available with active, active multi-geo support, object storage, integrated full text support, legal intercept, and you know, the full support and SLA that comes along with the, the commercial product. That, that's all going to be kept. Um, but what we added on top of that now is this more cloud-based architecture, um, natively designed for the clouds, Kubernetes ready. Um, Things like zero downtime maintenances. That was not something that we cared about in 2002. These are things that happen all the time now when you're cycling through containers and upgrading a continuous integration kind of scenarios. Uh, Built-in health checking in the past has been an add-on to the Dovecot platform. It's now built into the platform. Statistics and monitoring. User group clustering management. Again, all this stuff used to be kind of on the side of a Dovecot platform, and now it's all built into it. Um, the, the architecture has been condensed into a two-layer architecture, which, again, more cloud-friendly. We get rid of the stateless director layer. Um, and then for if we have any technical people here, my tech team wanted to make sure that I said or, or, or informed you that the separation of the control plane from data plane is really the technical explanation of what was done um, as part of Dovecot 3.0. Transitioning, if you're already a customer, again, is something that's built into Dovecot Pro. We understand that you know, trying to move from one platform to another is not an easy task. Um, it's, this is a zero data migration transition. So there's no data migration. In fact, it's intended to be zero downtime. There will be rollback available to at least a certain degree at the beginning. It, at some point, it's going to be, you know, you're going to have enough people moved over. It'd be difficult, but there will be rollback available at the beginning. And, um, this will be established procedures because currently on our OxCloud hosted platform, as we'll talk about here in, in the, the, last, the last slide, this is already occurring. So there is a, uh, I hate to use an overused term, dog fooding, but there's already dog fooding going on, but it's proof of, uh, not going to be proof of concept. Uh, this will actually be trusted technology that we have used internally to move people uh, with no downtime between the versions. So with all that being said, this, because we have this new architecture and this new architecture uh, is our path forward, that means that the old director architecture is no longer something that we need and so therefore is obsolete um, and is no longer going to be maintained and in fact has already been removed from the core and open source version. Um, this may be, you know, for some people in this room, this may be kind of a some kind of big news. Um, but in general, we are trying to focus, first of all, trying to focus on the commercial product. And second, on the open source product, we want to get back to the Dovecot roots. 
um, for the open source product, which is focusing on a single server. Uh, so DoveCot, Open Exchange, DoveCot as a company, we're still very passionate, open standards, uh, open source. So DoveCot will continue to remain, uh, there'll still be an open source version. Um, but that open source version will be um, uh, maintained for single server use only. We're actually taking out anything that really kind of involves multiple servers, desync replication, uh, some other stuff. Um, so DoveCot will be a fully f uh, featured single node email server in the open source. And so Pro will be our supported platform going forward for any sort of scalable installation. Um, the asterisk to that is if you are a DoveCot Pro customer, uh, we will continue to have director support for at least two years long term support uh, from when 3.0 is released. Still to be determined, uh, you know, that, that flexible potentially can be. Um, uh, potentially can be extended, but we're not going to leave uh, current customers hanging with, uh, with that platform. So that should cover the what of DoveCot Pro, and then the final, uh, final question to answer is the when. And I have created this elaborate timeline um, about uh, DoveCot Pro 3.0. Uh, as we speak right now, well, maybe not right now, I haven't checked my phone in an hour, but as we speak, uh, what will become DoveCot Pro 3 um, is being deployed on our OxCloud hosted platforms. Um, this, is, this is sort of a very sysopsy SRE uh, experience where our engineering team is working with the operations team uh, to roll this out. Um, why do I tell you this? Uh, first of all, just to plug OxCloud, because OxCloud is uh, an option if you don't want to run DoveCut yourself. But second, to let you know that this is not so when DoveCut 3.0 is released, this is not something we're just throwing out into the wild. This will be battle-tested technology um, that will be serving millions of users. Um, so very confident that uh, you know if you uh, a DoveCot Pro 3.0 installation externally uh, should run smoothly because uh, we will be the proof of that. Um, so right now, you know, you're asking me to predict the future. I'm not very good at predicting the future. Uh, external release. Let's say it's Q3. Um, you know, obviously that's subject to change because we're trying to be ag you know not agile in terms of. Um, being flexible in terms of what we see, uh, but looking at some point in you know, the second half of this year that the, the DoveCot Pro 3.0 code will be released externally. Uh, that's it. I'd like to thank everybody for coming today, uh, taking 20 minutes of your valuable time uh, sitting here and listening to me talk. Uh, if you have any questions or want to discuss, um, our booth, I'm not, as an American, my metric uh, knowledge is kind of limited. I think we're like 25 centimeters away or something. It's the booth right here. You, walk, you will literally walk by the booth uh, as you leave today. Uh, but we would love to talk to you. Uh, other than that, everyone, hope that you have the good rest of the Cloud Fest. And uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>